Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm Susanna Erler. I am the organizer for the Austin chapter of TechSoup Connect. I'm also the director of Greater Good Strategies. And I am excited to be here with you today to talk about unlocking grant opportunities. We're going to talk about strategic tools for finding the right funders. And as mentioned, I am uh, I am your presenter today. I'm Susanna Erler. I am a certified fundraising executive. Uh, I'm director of Greater Good Strategies, and I will put I've put some of my contact information into the chat. Uh, this is um, let's talk about what we'll be talking about today. We'll be talking about unlocking grant opportunities. Now you, when you signed up for this orientation, rather presentation, you saw this description and here it is. It's one of the biggest grant writing secrets. Your chances of obtaining funding increase significantly when you find the right funding opportunity. So don't spin your wheels. Make sure you're applying to grant funders that align with your nonprofit organization. So join us. You have joined us for this online presentation. Me, Susanna Erler, CFRE, Director of Greater Good Strategies, will share steps and strategies for effective grant prospecting. So a little bit about me. I'm a nonprofit geek. Here's how to contact me, and I've put that into the chat as well. Um, I love nonprofits and I love helping nonprofits. I, um, I'm a trained interim executive director for nonprofit organizations. I've been uh, the interim executive director for a number of organizations, such as the Literacy Coalition of Central Texas, the Texas Grants Resource Center, and others. I've been an executive director and station manager for a national public radio affiliate. I have uh, fundraised for education and workforce initiatives and many more. Uh, I've also written grant applications that have procured over $16 million for grant for nonprofit organizations. And that's why I love talking about grants, which we will do today. I have a master's degree in business and an art with an arts administration nonprofit specialization from the University of Wisconsin School of Business and a bachelor's degree from Oberlin College. I'm a certified member of Mission Capital's Interim Executive Director Placement Program and a certified fundraising executive. And I write about uh, nonprofits at greatergoodgeek.com and on Twitter or X at greatergoodgeek. So I will try and keep an eye on the, on the chat box while I'm talking, but get my attention somehow if you have a question. I love answering questions. And let's talk about today's goals. So this presentation focuses on helping nonprofit 501c3 organizations to get grants. We, uh, we're going to talk for about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes. And of course, take questions if there are any. You will learn why it's important to find grant opportunities that align with your nonprofit organization's mission. You will also get tools and strategies for finding the best alignments. You will get a bunch of new info blasts. I use the term info blasts as something, it's a takeaway that you can use day to day. It's sort of like, you know, when you've gone to a conference and after the conference, you say, what are my biggest takeaways? And usually it's like a link or, you know, it's a philosophy sometimes, but it's also info blasts, like something that you can use day to day. So I've peppered this presentation with those kinds of bits of information. So um, this, this presentation is about the important steps to take before you start writing a grant application. That's an important note. The grant application journey is a long and winding road as uh, many of us know. And this is about the first phase of that long and winding road. It's about the all the great steps that will increase your chances of getting an award that you do early in the process. 
it's also, this presentation is also about you and your job. It's about empowerment. Knowledge is power. So please throw any grant fears out the window. We want to empower you with information to get that grant. Throw those fears out the window and ask me anything. Again, I love answering questions. Ask me anything in the chat or if you can unmute, but I think uh, this platform is more uh, chat oriented. So anyway, so one reason that I love answering questions and it's sort of like ask me anything here is because there are so many different scenarios in the nonprofit world. In fact, there is a saying and that is, once you have learned about one grant funder, you have learned about one grant funder. They are all so very, very different. So it's sort of, it's a little hard to sort of say, here's a rule that happens 100% of the time, and here's another rule or tip that happens 100% of the time. No, there are very, a lot of variations in the nonprofit world. So question, what is a grant? So you all know this, but it's always good to sort of level set here. Um, and that is grant is usually, a grant is usually funding. And it's usually a little different from the relationship-based donation, the, the donations from those individuals, for example, who love your mission. It's a little, sometimes a little different than that, but there sometimes, you know, love, loving of the mission is a part of it. But it's uh, also grants are usually awarded to a recipient, a grantee who carries out the activities that were proposed in the grant application. So your grant application is usually going to describe some activities that you commit to proposing. Then if you get the grant, you'll carry that out. And many consider the grant application to be a binding document, like a contract or a pre-contract. So keep that in mind as you are composing your grant applications because often or the, most of the time the grant maker if you are uh, if you do receive a grant will hold you to what you put in the application. Some categories as we sort of do some level setting here. Grant maker categories include the public sources like the federal government, private sources like the Dell Foundation, community foundations like the Austin Community Foundation, to family foundations like the Top for Family Foundation, and corporate funders like Wells Fargo. And each kind of application may seem a little bit different. Just mentioning that. Um, but in my book, you know, there are some consistencies to that a grant writer always needs to do, like being, you know, no matter what kind of grant maker there is being uh ha having a high attention to the details of the application is one of those those threads that runs throughout all the kinds of grant makers so we are talking about finding the grant the right grant funder to apply to as i mentioned we're we're focusing on the first part of the grant writing journey it's a very important part. And frankly, I think sometimes folks might overlook this part. So you are going to be fortunate to hear about this part of the journey. And I love talking about this part of the journey. So think of this question. I want to plant the seed in your head. Uh, how have you, you don't have to answer this in the chat, but you can if you like. You might have written a grant application in the past. Maybe you haven't. But how, think for a second, how have you found those new grant funders to apply to in the past? Some of the common ways are a database, which we will talk about. Uh, we'll talk about all of these. Uh, you, perhaps you've heard about some grant opportunities through somebody that you know, a connection, and sometimes they just randomly come to you uh, via an email or whatever. So these are some of the ways that folks find new grant funders. We're going we're gonna to talk about some, you know, very deliberate ways to do it in this presentation. But these are some of the ways that folks find those grant funders. Do, there's a strategy to finding the right grant funder to apply to. Doing a search might feel overwhelming at first, but there is a strategy. 
Folks, I'm here to tell you there is a strategy for finding the right funder to apply to. The strategy for finding the best potential funder for your organization and increasing your chance of a grant award. Here it comes. Drum roll. The strategy is to find the possible funder who is the most probable funder. I'll say that again. Copyright Susanna. It is to find the possible funder who is the most probable funder. We'll talk about this. You've got to do research to, to determine a grant opportunity's chance of success for your organization. Why? Because each grant application is an investment of time and resources. And if you don't get the grant, that investment of time and resources has turned out to be a zero return on your investment. You want to get the, you want to do the research to determine the grant opportunity's chance of success so that you can get that grant. Now, I'm going to pause to take a quick sip of water. Okay, I didn't want to cough in your ears, so. Um, and maybe that was a dramatic pause, too. So again, strategy. Determine the grant opportunity's chance of success for your organization. So let me share a story. So uh, early on in my career, I, uh, especially the grant writing part, I would search for potential grant funders to apply to. And I would use the database, and we'll talk about a database in a second or in a little bit. Um, and I would plug in the terms, and about 100 different grant funders would come in, you know, down the list, on the list. And I was like, yay, we're in the money. We can apply to 100. However, it, it's your responsibility to to sort through that, say, list of 100 potential possible funders to do your due diligence to learn to see which ones, which funders are the most probable funders for you. And that takes a little bit of time to weed that list of, say, 100 down to the, say, 10 potential funders that you have, say, time to apply to. So you want to use your time very wisely. Does one size fit all? No, finding the right funder is like finding the right partner or home or job. There is not one size fits all. So you might be asking yourself, why, what, how? Why, what, how? Here are the answers. Going to share answers. Why is it important to approach the right grant funders? What information do I need to know for the search? How do I find the right funders and opportunities? Let's talk about this. Why? Why is it important to find, to approach the right grant funders, the funders that align with your organization's mission, your nonprofit's mission? Each grant application is an investment of time and energy. I can't repeat this enough. I mean, you as a grant writer or somebody on your team is going to take that application form, is going to read all of the guidelines and all of the questions and read all of the details that the grant funder, potential grant funder has. And you are, and that's going to take time. And then it's going to take time to collect the answers for each of the questions. Sometimes it takes 20 hours. Sometimes it takes 40 hours. Sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes shorter. But you need to approach the most probable funder for you so that you can get, there's a high chance that you'll get that grant. So your return on your investment of the time that you spend on the application is high. So doing that research at the front end, at the beginning, is going to pay off in the long run. 
So the main takeaways are to this part, to this question is spending time on determining what the best funder alignments are will save you time and resources in the long run. And the suggestion is that you spend time to estimate a grant opportunity's chance of success. So the next question you might have is what, what, what information do I need to know for the search? What, what? Here we go. Let's talk about that. You, you as your, uh, at your nonprofit, your team might need to have some discussions before you do a search for a potential funder. And this, these discussions or your personal research will uh, influence the search strategy. So visualize yourself, say, on your team asking some of these questions. Uh, the, these are some of the questions that you might need to understand or collect before you do a grant funder search. You might need to know how big your nonprofit's budget size is what your scope and history of service at your nonprofit is. Do you have a de designated grant writer and what is your fundraising team's bandwidth for actually writing the application? What are the funds needed for? What do you want to uh, pay for in, in, when you ask for a grant application, when you ask for a grant? And what are those project parameters that you need funding for? We'll go through these questions. So the first two questions, budget size and scope and history of, of service. So before you go look, say on a database, you'll need to sort of know, you'll need to know the size of your nonprofit, the scope and the history of your services. Why are these answers important? Because there are some funders that uh, I'll just say some, sometimes we'll say the newer nonprofits, the smaller nonprofits, it's, it's uh, a, sometimes a, a sad fact that those bigger federal funders, the bigger national or funders, national focus funders, those funders are a less probable match for the small nonprofits, for the new nonprofits, for the nonprofits with a small scope of service, or those nonprofits who have received their 501c3 designation very recently. Not all the time, there are always exceptions, but I have seen nonprofits who say a month ago received their 501c3 designation, they haven't uh, actually uh, produced services for the community yet, though they have a big heart and a big vision, sometimes those folks, I've seen them say, well, let's just get a federal grant uh, and we'll be good to go. Uh, you know, a U.S., I'm talking about U.S. here, um, and we'll be good to go and we can do everything that we visualize and want to do. However, those federal grant applications, for example, are quite often very long and quite often ask about your past services, you as in your nonprofit's past services. And if there's no history of services there, then that question might need to be left blank. And unfortunately, or I should say, it's just the fact of the matter that the federal grant opportunities are quite competitive and they score, you know, they score. And if there's a, a zero on one of those uh, questions, then that lowers a score. And sometimes the cutoff scores for funding are in the 90s. Uh, I can tell you stories about that, you know, cutting off at 96, you know, points out of 100 or, or whatever. And if you don't, if you can't answer a question, then that will immediately lower your application score. So the, this is, these are things to know as you decide who to apply to, where to apply to. So here's a little moment of haiku to, as I look down to see if there's any questions in the chat. I've been looking down as we go, but I do, uh, of course, love question, to answer questions. Uh, this is a little uh, moment of haiku while you think about whether you have any questions. Uh, and then I'll continue after reading this short haiku. Uh, grant writers, ignore shiny objects. Instead, 
heed the funders guidelines that's a little 575 haiku written by yours truly the greater good geek nonprofit geek okay no questions are coming through so let's continue of course you are invited to ask questions along the way as well all right so the next bit of information that you'll need to know for the search is do you have a grant writer what's your team's bandwidth so why are these answers important so for the situations listed below on this slide be especially mindful before embarking on a long and involved application some of these grant applications can be very very long some are short but uh, if you have a potential long application you might need to say to yourself do we want to embark on this long application if we for example don't have a designated grant writer. I mean, are you gonna be pulling folks from your programming to answer some of these questions on the grant application? And if so, do they have the time to help with the grant application? Um, if your nonprofit say team doesn't have the bandwidth to assist with an application, or if it doesn't have say the documents that are asked for in the application, like financial statements or other elements that are required by the funder. So sometimes just read through the questions ahead of time before you decide we're definitely applying for this one to see if you can answer all the questions. And perhaps you, you are with a newer nonprofit and you may not have all of the historical financial statements, for example, that a funder requests in an application then you might choose to just to go with a different application to spend your time, your very valuable time on a different application where you can answer the questions that they have. All right, so your next question as you're deciding uh, what information you need to know for the searcher is what are the funds needed for? So basically when you, for example, go to search for grant funders at a database, there'll be some key words that you'll be plugging in, words that succinctly boil down your needs. Your mission statement might help, for example. So here's a sample mission statement. Um, it's Sample Charity International. The mission is to empower women to enhance health and end hunger. So if I were working for them and I wanted to find a, an application or rather a grant funder that aligned with our nonprofit, I might pull out you know, international, uh, that's a geographic area we serve, women, health and hunger. These are some of the keywords that I'll need to plug into, say, a database to find a potential funder. I'll also need to know if the funding that we want to get is for programming, operating costs, equipment, capital like buildings. I have to say one tip is that if the funds that your nonprofit needs are for anything besides project costs, the grant search is going to be more intensive, not impossible, but just longer. Why? The grant, the grant funders out there, there are less grant funders that wish to fund operating costs, equipment, capital, then there are grant funders that want to fund project or programs, program projects or services. That's just one of those things. I can speculate as to why. Uh, one reason speculation is that often grant funders want to attach their name to a program project or service to say, we have helped serve, we have helped feed, you know, 100 hungry folks in, uh, in every month or that kind of thing. That might be one reason, but if you just be aware that if you need funds for operating or equipment or capital, grants may not be your first choice because it's going to be harder to find those grant funders that fund in those categories. Not impossible. You may wish to choose to uh, raise funds for the for operating equipment or capital, for example, in other ways, such as through events or individual donors or that kind of thing. Um, and that is a tip on that topic. So let's move forward. The other information you need to know for the search is project parameters. What do I mean by that? 
So you say you want a some funding, you need some funding for a program, project or service. Uh, you need to determine your project parameters before you search. I'll give you an example in a second. The size of your project, the scope, the timeline, the cost. For example, uh, say your nonprofit is is uh, wants to deliver a put on do a summer science camp for middle schoolers. So you will before you apply before you search for potential funders, you'll need to know how many middle schoolers you want to serve, how many science projects you'll need to do, how many weeks of the camp, when will we need the funds before the camp starts, how much money will we need. These are great things to know before you start searching for potential funders. Why? You might find a funder that aligns with your mission, but only gives for gives a hundred dollars you know for every application for example that and you might say we actually needed fifty thousand dollars for this camp so perhaps we might try to apply in this other direction or with this other potential funder so and also you also timeline is very key here's a tip for you uh, it's best to start your grant applications at least three to six months, ballpark, before the funds are needed. So start your search before that. So here's a little story to illustrate this fact. One time as a, when I was a consultant, uh, a nonprofit approached me and said that they wanted, they needed some funds. They wanted some grant funds. Could I help them get some grant funds for a summer camp and here we were in late april when they approached me i said when does the summer camp start uh late may that's a month away yes there's <laughs> i had to tell them gently and kindly that there are not that many grant funders who have that quick a turnaround of four weeks like you it's just not probable um you so you need to to build that time in to write the application. It might take you a few weeks. It might take you uh, like 20 hours, 40 hours over the course of a week, over the course of two weeks to gather all the information. And then the grant funder has their own timeline. Again, once you've learned about one grant funder, you've learned about one grant funder. Some of them have an annual timeline and only consider applications annually. Some of them consider applications monthly, but don't let you know for three months after that. So you just have to, to factor that in uh, as you are looking for the funds you need. So, you know those questions you were asking yourself? Why? What? How? How? You might be asking yourself, how do I search for the right funders? Let's talk about that. There are three frequent options, as I mentioned at the beginning. Hearing about random opportunities, relationships, and databases. I'll pause here to let you think about which one you think might be my favorite. Uh, they're all, they all have their own validities, but I, uh, you could probably guess which one is my favorite. So let's talk about hearing about random opportunities first. So, so these are the ones, for example, where you're sitting at your computer and you're in front of your email and all of a sudden you, you've been, you get an email and it's been added, you've been added to somebody's list e-blast list and it's like apply for this grant opportunity and you're like wow this is a random opportunity wow so they i have to say though beware of those uh, random opportunities sometimes for example they are um pr somewhat promotional for example um there are a number of um like marketing outfits with big hearts that want to give away their marketing services as sort of a promotional thing, but also, you know, because they have big hearts. But sometimes they get email lists and they send out these like, get, apply for our marketing services. It's, 
it's not money, it's in-kind services. And you think, okay, this is great. I could win something, but just be careful because it might be like a lot of time to fill out the application and you're just one of say a hundred applicants, for example, and they just pick one that might need not be a high return on your investment of time if the probability is not high that you'll receive it. So just be careful. Just, you know, do your due diligence and read through uh, before deciding to go forward with any opportunity, but uh, especially those random ones. Okay, another way to find the right funder. So how do I search for the right funder? Relationships. So you are, you might be a development professional, a nonprofit development professional. You will be mining your relationships. You will be leveraging your relationships. You're a fundraising professional for perhaps. So you might ask, say the board of your nonprofit, hey, are you aware of any specific grant opportunities that would be a good fit for us? Do you have an affiliation with the funder? These are relationships and they're a good way to find some funders. Now also be, you know, cautious, do your due diligence. Sometimes I've had been on teams where a board member, they, they hear uh, the grant writer ask for potential grant funders and they are like, oh, I received this random opportunity. I'm just going to forward it to them. So, you know, just be, be sure that you as a grant writer read through all of the guidelines to ensure a fit uh, and double check that kind of thing. Now, the question, the, again, the question, how do I search for the right funders? Databases. If you guessed that was my favorite, give yourself five gold stars because you are right. This, these are my favorite databases. Let's talk about databases. So some databases, and I'm just, since I'm a geek, I just listed a whole bunch, but not all of them. Um, there's a lot of them out there. I'll tell you which one's my favorite in a second. Uh, but here are some places that might be a good place or, you know, may not be a good place if it's, uh, let me go through this list uh, real quick. So some options, these are some options again. Uh, are the Foundation Center by Candid's database, Foundation Directory Online. We'll talk more about that in a second. GrantStation, uh, they are a uh, they are a fee-based one. Uh, and, and, and I'm not endorsing necessarily any particular fee-based ones or anything like that. Just kind of, again, a geek who's listing things. Uh, and then Grants.gov, that's just federal. And as I mentioned a few slides ago, uh, federal opportunities are not for all nonprofits, especially, you know, use, use your, you know, be, use caution before deciding to apply to a federal grant. If you are a new or a small nonprofit, just make sure that, uh, that you might be competitive and you'd have to read all the application questions before you made that decision. And then there are other fee-based platforms, uh, instrumental and other things like that. Um, but I just want to illustrate that there are many different databases for finding a grant opportunity. But I'm going to talk for a second here about my favorite. Now I'm not, you know, I don't represent Candid. Uh, I don't represent the uh, foundation director online. I just have used been using it for decades and I love it because I'm a geek, but uh, I, and I want to talk about it and uh, uh, focus on it, you know, as a tool here. So it is sort of the gold standard, the Foundation Center by Candid Database, Foundation Directory Online. It's known as both of those terms. Candid is an organization. Uh, that is a nonprofit that administers this and other tools uh, and also has other nonprofit tools. So check them out. Um, and I'll put these links into the chat in a moment. But uh, they have so the Foundation Center by Candid, uh, the Candid has a funder information network. I think they've recently changed their name uh, to like community network or something like that. But uh, they 
Candid provides database access to, that is free. They have a fee-based level, but though the they Candid knows that the fee is kind of out of reach for some of the smaller, newer nonprofits, and they really, ha you know, they have a big heart, that, so they really want nonprofits to be able to use their database. Um, and so they have these locations, they administer these locations around the globe where people can go to use their gold standard database at, say, a library or uh, another resource center. So the first link I'll put in is if you're not in the Austin area, there you can find other locations. I'll talk about the Austin area for a second because we're the Austin chapter. But uh, if you're outside of Austin, there is the link. I'll put it in the chat in a second. The candid.org slash find us so that you can find some of these network locations to use their gold standard database for free. Uh, if you're in Austin, you can go to the Texas Grants Resource Center, uh, and I'll put that link into the chat. There is, I believe there is a orientation that you have to take before you can make an appointment, uh, but check out their link. I, I don't represent them. Um, and then the other place is Nonprofit Austin. They have a grant research center at Center for Nonprofit Studies, Nonprofit Austin's community space. Uh, they're affiliated with the Austin Community College. Uh, and I will put that link into the chat. They do require, I am affiliated with them, but uh, I'm a contractor with them. They, uh, and I present some of their orientations. So they do require an orientation before you uh, make an appointment to use the, for free, their, the database to search for grant opportunities. And then uh, the Austin Public Library used to provide this database, but just in the last few months, they uh, have informed the public that they no longer do that. So let me put these in the chat real quick so that I do not uh, forget. Let's see, here's the, here's the links. And then we will continue with the slides. Here's the chat. Okay, there are your links. All right, back to the slides. So if you go to use a database, here's a strategy. This is one of those info blasts. Your strategy for using the database to find a grant funder, sift through the database, give sort of a higher score to the stronger matches. Again, you really want to apply to spend your time on the applications that are most probable for your nonprofit organization. So determine your keywords. So the foundation uh, directory online has some hardwired keywords, and these are some samples of them, uh, human services, public affairs, public safety, that kind of thing, population served, um, and then you plug them in. Now, I, I recommend, I'm, I'm not going to do a deep dive on this particular database. This is sort of a light summary that we are going through right now. But here's a tip. Focus for sure on these three fields. Subject area, geographic focus, population served. But especially subject area and geographic focus. Why? Because grant funders tend to focus on particular geographic areas. So you might find, for example, a grant funder that aligns with your mission. You feel like, oh my gosh, we both care about, you know, educating kindergartners, for example. Yay, we're going to apply to them. And then you read their guidelines and you realize, say, they only apply, they only fund places in Ohio. So you've got to make sure, and you're not in Ohio, for example. So you've got to make sure there's not only a subject area focus, but a geographic focus as well. And then sometimes you can drill down uh, with the population served. If you both say serve kindergartners or are interested in serving kindergartners, that's an example. Um, and then there are other fields, but I re and they're all important, but I really recommend you focus on these top three fields. Um, 
Yes. When it comes to geography, start local. Make sure that the funder is funding locally where you are. Um, and here is how the results, when you press search, you've typed in some keywords, you press search and they have, there's a list. This is kind of a example. Again, we're not doing a deep dive into how to use this particular database because the places that I shared information about, they have their own orientations. But just to give you an idea about how exciting they are because they do provide lists of funders. You're like, wow, look at that list. Um, then you do due diligence to see if, you know, you go to their website and you read more about these potential funders to make sure that they would be a good use of your time to apply to. Uh, some other things to uh, look into, does the giving amount line up with our needs? Say you might need a million dollars. If they don't give a million dollars or never have, then, you know, you might want to look for that unicorn funder that gives a million dollars or whatever. So, um, and then you take the list of your first cut and you do dig deeper into the database. You might do a number of different searches to see what funders come up more often. Um, go to the funder's website. Are they still funding? Learn more about them. Learn about their application process. And then here is a another info blast, a handy reference sheet because I, I really want you to succeed. If you're in Austin, here are four funders that come up frequently. I'll put this into the chat. Now, these okay, these are funders that come up often in Central Texas and Austin grant opportunity searches. It's not an all-inclusive list. It's not in any particular order. I'm not in implying an endorsement. They may not be a fit for all nonprofits, but if you have, if you say, okay, that was a great, you say to yourself, I really appreciated Susanna's information, but I don't have time to go to a, to search a database. Well, then I say to you, check out one of these potential funders if you don't have time to, to search a database, because it's my gift to you, because I want you to succeed. Um, and check check out these potential funders if you're in Central Texas, which you might be because this is the Austin chapter. And then I put them into the chat. And this is our summary. So we are now closing into the end of the presentation. Uh, these are some summary and tips in no particular order. Think of a funder as a partner. Find the right match. Find a way, here's another tip, find a way, summary, to access the foundation directory to do your prospect searches. And I've put those links into the chat. Understand and heed the funder's guidelines. Have your IRS letter of determination handy. You might need it for the application. Have a viable project design. We talked a little bit about that. Don't, don't create or significantly change a project to make it fit a certain funder or application guidelines. This might take you off mission. Also, if your organization doesn't have a long track record, consider partnering or connecting with a fiscal agent or looking at grants that other organizations have gotten that have a limited track record. And as I've mentioned throughout this presentation, don't forget your return on your investment when you're applying, when you're deciding to apply. Just know that a federal application may be, need a different approach or may be longer than a foundation application. Here's another tip. Have a staff person familiar with a, a project available to answer questions if you're a grant writer. Have a roadmap for those projects that start a year from now and start searching for grant opportunities now. And the final tip, stay positive. You can do this. You are now empowered with info. So again, throw those concerns that you have about grant writing out the window, jump into the process and watch the winning grants roll in. And uh, if you want these slides, please put your contact information into the chat and I can send them to you, your email address into the chat. 
Um, that is the way to obtain the slides if you wish to get them. That's the only way to, so in this moment, give me your email address if you wish to get the slides. And final notes, it's been great to spend time with you. Please stay in touch. Don't forget to save the chat. Uh, I do see, thank you, uh, Arna, Arnardo, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, but uh, AM, got, got that, I'm gonna save it now. Everybody, stay in touch. Thank you for being here. Here's the final, and if you have any questions, please do let me know uh, now. Uh, I will sort of stay on for a little bit, for a minute or two, if folks have questions, because I love answering questions. And here is my contact information if you want to take a screenshot or save the chat. So thank you, folks. Thanks for all that you do for communities. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of the TechSoup Connect Austin chapter. Take that survey uh, that I mentioned at the top. Uh, if you haven't already, thank you if you've taken it. Please stay in touch. We would love to. We would love to see you at a future chapter event. Thanks for being here, and have a great day. Thank you.